Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at how to find an ideal sample size. So in these situations, you might be given a certain margin of error that you're allowed or that you are accepting in your computations. And then from there, you want to determine, well, what should the sample size be of the sample that you collect data on in order to give you that margin of error? So what you see at the top of the page here is a formula that tells us what n should be given a certain margin of error, a certain confidence level, and a certain p and q hat values. So just to recall and give some context of where this formula comes from, we know that margin of error is equal to z star times the square root of p hat q hat over n. So if we solve for n in this formula, we would get out this formula here. And if you have the time and if you're curious about it, I encourage you to go through that algebra on your own. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your instructor. One small point here is that if we want to know our sample size n in order to give us a certain margin of error that we want, then you see that we have p hat and q hat involved in this formula as well, which implies that we already took a sample. And most of the cases in these situations, we have an idea of what we'd expect for our sample proportion. So that are, those are the values that we use for p hat and q hat. So one other note here is that the n value that we get, we always want to round up to the nearest whole number. So if the n that we compute is 111.1, then we're gonna still round this number up to 112. And that's to guarantee that we have indeed sampled enough people to guarantee the margin of error that we want. All right, so now let's take a look at example six. And the more examples of these types of problems that you see and do, you will start to feel more comfortable with this type of computations. All right, so example six says, it's believed that 25% of adults over 50 never graduated high school. We wish to see if the same is true among 25 to 30 year olds. So what we're given here is this 25%, that's gonna be the assumed population proportion that we're gonna wanna test. So that means for us, P is gonna be 0.25. We're gonna see how likely it is that the proportion is 0.25. So we're gonna start with P equals 0.25 in our calculations. So this would mean that Q is 0.75. So now part A says, how many of this younger age group must we survey in order to estimate the proportion of non-grads to within 6% with 90% confidence? So let's, before we dive in, unpack all the information we're given. So we see here that we're already told what P and Q are assumed to be. So we're gonna use these P and Q values in our formula. What else are we given? Well, we wanna estimate this proportion within 6%. So this 6% is gonna be that margin of error. So 6% as a decimal would be 0.06. And then we're told 90% confidence. So this is gonna tell us our Z star value. So what is that Z star value? Well, we just flip back a couple pages to our work finding those critical Z scores. 90% confidence level tells us our Z score is 1.6449. So we're gonna copy that down. So that means Z score is equal to 1.6449. Six four four nine, And so the question here is, how many of this younger age group must we survey? So that means we want to find N. So let's check, do we have everything we need to compute N? Well, we have our P and our Q, we have our Z star, and we have our margin of error. So we can just plug in all the information we have to compute N. So this means N is equal to P 0.25 times Q 0.75 times 
Z star 1.6449 over the margin of error 0.06, all squared. So at this point, please pause the video and work out this number in your calculator. This will help you to develop some practice using your calculator and making these kind of computations. So if we look together, we should be getting 0.25 times 0.75 times, and I'm gonna use a lot of parentheses here, times 1.6449 divided by 0.06, and I'm gonna end my parentheses, and then I'm gonna square that entire term. So we should be getting 140.92, so this means n is equal to 140.9217 if we want to copy four total decimal places. But what will the actual n need to be in our sample? We need to round up because we always round up for these calculations. So that would mean n is equal to 141. So to summarize, we should survey 141 people in this younger age group. All right, so now let's take a look at part B. So part B says, suppose we want to cut the margin of error to 4%, but again, using 90% confidence. What is the necessary sample size? So how is this problem different than the one we just looked at? Well, it's very similar, everything's the same, but now our margin of error that we're gonna use in our calculation is 0 0.04. So take a moment to pause the video and set up that calculation on your own. And after you've given yourself some time to look at that problem, then you can check your work. So our formula, that we need to calculate is gonna be n is equal to 0.25 times 0.75 times 1.6449. We still have that same confidence level. So we still have the same Z star, but now we just divide by 0.04 and we square. So go ahead and pause the video to make that calculation. And when you're ready, we can compare answers. You should be getting 317, 317.0738. So here, do we round down to 317? Nope, we always round up. So for us, that's gonna be N is equal to 318. So now we should sample or survey 318 people in the younger group. So if we have a smaller margin of error, 4%, then we need a larger sample. But if we have a larger margin of error, so that's okay to have a more error in our interval, then we don't need to survey as many people. So we go from 141 to 318.